Hello everyone, welcome to the course uh, Neuroscience for Engineer. I am Rathin Joshi, a PhD scholar from BISLAB Electronic System Engineering Department, Indian Institute of Science. Also I am the TA of the course. In today's uh, couple of short module, we will be discussing about uh, some of the recent trends in neural engineering, which will be mainly focusing on uh, computational part and how to understand and interpret the biopotentials acquired uh, at a different level of brain. Like as you all of you know, there is some, something called EEG, electroencephalography, which is nothing but electrical discharge generates from your brain. It is recorded from your scalp. Now there are different types of electrode which records uh, this kind of electro, uh, this kind of biopotentials from your scalp. Uh, if it is on the hair, you might use certain set of electrode known as spike electrodes because it should go through your hair to record the activity. If it is on your forehead, you can use other type of electrode. If you are using some gel, that is called wet electrode. If you are not using gel, that is called dry electrode. Both the things have their own pros and cons. So there are different methods to record EEG basically. Uh, we will try to learn and extract the information out of EEG. Uh, each and every biopotential gives some or the other form of information. Like you know in some of the movies and all you would have seen ECG. So that you know that kind of line will go through. So that is the ECG and that gives you the information regarding the state of your uh, functionality of your heart whereas EEG reflects your brain activity. Um, also, if you give a certain set of events or stimuli and your brain reacts to that, that will give you an idea regarding your sensory system. Also, we will have a look at a little bit on a disorder called epilepsy, how using EEG signal we can interpret the information uh, uh, regarding the state of epilepsy, whether it is uh, spread across the brain or it is localized to one particular area. All this thing we will try to cover in this uh, short module. Uh, this is the last week of the course, so I will not go into detail about that, but uh, the agenda of the class is to keep you people to that level that from which you can explore by your own and try to get the things done. So uh, we will start the first module of the recent trends in neural engineering, which is known as ERP analysis. Now ERP analysis is event related potential analysis. So before moving ahead. Uh, that how we can extract ERP and how we can uh, use uh, mathematical operations to get that thing done. First, we will quickly see what is ERP. So, let us see that. It is a basic introduction. Uh, it looks, looks like a heavy uh, block diagram, but it is very simple. Uh, we uh, will start from number 1, which states uh, stimuli generation and transmission unit. Now, uh, this is basically uh, to uh, check the sensory pathway integrity. Okay. So, which are the sensory pathways we have? We have auditory system, we have visual system, there is something called somatosensory pathways which is nothing but touch, we have smell as well, but here we will focus on auditory and visual stimuli. So, first thing is you will design a certain space, certain uh, specific auditory and visual stimuli which will help you to assess the condition of your system. Now the thing is uh, brain waves, uh, your brain reacts to any kind of event. Uh, in general as well, uh, human being reacts to certain things whereas in terms of neurophysiological way as well, whenever some events happen your brain reacts to that and it has a certain set of randomness. Not every time your brain, brain reacts exactly the same thing. Additionally, these brain waves are very, very sensitive. It is of micro volt range. So, even a certain artifact or even a something, suppose power line interference or if something like your electrodes have been placed and you are getting some more uh, where it is near to your heart, you will get ECG artifacts, so many things you will be facing. Okay. So, this uh, moral of the story is that uh, this uh, brain waves which react, uh, which generates as a reaction to certain event is random and considering the fact we are doing, we are uh, uh, you know generating a stimuli multiple amount of time. So, further we can average it out and we can get an actual response which is neural. It is very important to identify the response, uh, identify which is the neural response and which is the non-neural response. And uh, 
to make a neural sense out of recorded biopotential or uh, if i'm talking about neural to make a neural sense about recorded eeg or ecog uh, uh, pre processing plays a vital role also it depends on what are the frequencies you are capturing what are the you know uh, there is certain range above which you will say that okay this can't be neural at this level this is out of range so you, that is something called artifact rejection so what is your threshold for artifact rejection all this parameter matters when you pre process it so pre process plays a vital pre processing plays a vital role when you are removing a non neural part out of recorded biopotential so uh, this is basically a stimuli generation unit as i mentioned and uh, uh, several things are important in that if you are using auditory stimuli it depends which frequency you are using also the type of stimuli now there is something called tone there is something called click there, uh, when you uh, you press a mouse right you will hear the sound of mouse click similarly uh, there is something called tone there is something called chop so all this different time of time uh, type of sounds generate a different effect on your brain so it is important to identify that exactly which frequency you are uh, going to give as a stimuli also there are some uh, potential which generates due to the change of fre uh, frequency or let's say change of time uh, so that also is important that how many events you are using and those events are having which kind of parameter one of them is frequency other is called iti iti is inter trial interval now it is important that uh, whenever you are recording uh, next sound as i mentioned we are going to consider multiple epochs so ta 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 it will keep on coming in between ta and uh, what is the gap time gap so that is nothing but your inter trial interval okay uh, one more thing is uh, when we are giving this sound this sound will be on for certain set of time mostly in terms of few milliseconds then there will be a gap so if you are aware about uh, basics of electronics that is nothing but uh, on time and off time of particular uh, wave okay of uh, your uh, pulse so uh, how much duration you want that signal to be on so that also matters also there is a timbre so timbre is uh, if you are a music lover or if you know a few things uh, the, uh, the g sharp of guitar sounds different than g sharp of keyboard both are g sharps both are same frequency but it sounds different so the timbre factor is there uh, another thing is you can customize customize how this customized stimuli matters suppose um, a person is in coma or you know uh, suffering from mental disorder is more responsible more responsive to a sound from their loved ones like if some patient is there if you uh, you know give them a sound of normal tones and all it might uh, respond might not respond as well it depends on the state of uh, uh his uh, mental uh, you know neurophysiological uh, behavior or neurophysiological system but uh, the thing is if uh, someone is in coma there is something called coma recovery how he, uh, what are the chances he'll be recovered from coma and all this thing matters that if you give them a customized stimuli if you ask her loved ones her spouse or parents to record and give a particular auditory stimuli there are high chances and research has shown that there are high chances that a person can come out of that particular state easily so this customization also matters again when i talk about visual stimuli the intensity of light or intensity of the particular sound uh, sorry intensity of a particular image all this thing matters okay also the luminance there are some potentials which will generated due to the change of images at same luminance now which, which are the kind of images there can be checkerboard there can be inverted checkerboard there can be blue ball big blue ball red balls more so many things are there red is known to generate some form of you know uh, red shows violence the human uh, brain is very um, responsive to the red color so generally people avoid using red color because it generates so many other things as well so first and foremost the basic step you should know is how you are generating a stimuli and uh, you know you are presenting it to human brain now again this is a cartoon what you can see here of a human uh, brain and as i have talked about eeg signal analysis i am taking a uh, recordings from scalp now generally it is not required that you take recording only from two electrodes uh, this is just an illustration to give you an idea that these are the places electrodes uh, you know have been uh, uh, taken electrode have been placed to acquire the biopotential eeg also in the previous module uh, professor pandya has discussed that there is a 1020 system 
so which will completely from your nasen to inion and your uh, right ear to left ear they will uh, divide your entire scalp into different uh, position which is known as 1020 system so it will give you an idea that how to name or how to address considering that if this is on midline we can say that this is abz and cz just to give you an idea brush up the you know last uh, topic what i have discussed so this is a signal acquisition uh, next uh, the first thing is the stimuli generation also stimuli communication or stimuli transmission is as important as stimuli generation now what is stimuli transmission so when i am presenting a particular set of stimuli that particular stimuli should reach to my acquisition system as well because you have seen a particular image you have heard a particular sound but exactly at what time it happened so the timing information is very very crucial because based on that based on the onset of your event you are analyzing the further data you are checking how your brain has reacted etc so this uh, stimuli transmission is important it should go to your acquisition system uh, i'll come to acquisition system later uh, but first thing is uh, stimuli generation is to generate a stimuli stimuli transmission is to communicate or transmit the timing information from your stimuli generation unit to your acquisition device okay so flow wise this red color uh, block is basically stimuli transmission in unit which will be presented to a human being from human being uh, electrodes would be placed and biopotential is acquired now this electrode can be placed on scalp first and foremost the most uh, primary diagnostic method is uh, your eeg secondly uh, eeg is very frequently used to assess the brain uh, because it is a real time uh, signature uh, not 100% real time but it is an acceptable range and it has an excellent temporal resolution there are two types of resolution very important to assess the brain fmri is already discussed as a part of course that using dicom you can uh, see the fmri and all this thing which offers excellent spatial resolution whereas eeg offers excellent temporal resolution so if you have some you know uh, vision issue or some cognitive decline something eeg might be useful it will tell you how fast Uh, your reflexes are or where you uh, where which pathway uh, has some issue also at different diff in particular pathway suppose i have to talk about auditory pathway from my outer ear to auditory cortex is the entire auditory pathway so there are different different like uh, from going from place 1 to place 2 bangalore to hyderabad there are different milestones same as from outer ear to auditory cortex there are different milestones so the different milestones have their own pattern signatures so when you give a particular specifically designed auditory stimuli all this thing should be present to tell you that entire pathway is working fine okay same goes for visual pathway as well same goes for somatosensory uh, nervous system uh, somatosensory system as well all this thing so the thing what i was discussing is that eeg as recorded from your scalp it's a non invasive way offers excellent temporal resolution uh if you want to go further if you want to uh, but there's a limitation with eeg that it has a limited spatial resolution uh because even you record from the scalp okay that potential is uh because of there are so many underlying source within so you don't know exactly from where this thing is happening if you want to do that you can do of course fmri Uh, but for that you should know exactly where you are you know which brain region you are interested in secondly uh, you can also open the uh, open your you know uh, skull and try to go inside that will increase your spatial resolution it will give you more information but everything comes at the cost of opening your skull requires a neurosurgeon high risk of uh, damaging things as well as uh, uh, like you know high risk of tissue damage also you will be anesthetized so there will be a effect of anesthesia as well in your recording so uh, first of all this is a, uh, like signal acquisition now signal acquisition is basically uh, recording your uh, biopotentials eeg ecg uh, etc in this case for uh, when i talk about brain it's ecg eeg or ecog or seg seg is something called stereo eeg uh, we'll go into detail later but uh, this is basically your uh, Uh, acquisition now acquisition like stimuli generation depends on several factor one of them is uh, the most important thing is where you are recording okay you can't put electrode all over your head to measure something 
yes if you don't know the source initially for first time that's okay otherwise you cannot put your electrode all over the skull so electrode uh, site is important also uh, uh, when you are recording uh, apart from your active electrode now what is active electrode or what is main electrode that is when you place your electrode over over your skull to record the activity but ultimately all this acquisition unit is electronically made of instrumentation amplifier which requires two input so one of them is active uh, uh, electrode or active input and reference so you need to put somewhere reference also you need to put somewhere ground also so this reference and ground are very important it should be placed um, mostly generally it should be placed far away from your active side now when i say far away it's not like that i'll put my active electrode here and i'll put my ground electrode 5 feet away it will be there on my uh, body only but either it will be on my mastoid this called mastoid or it will i'll put it somewhere you know uh, in my forehead or something little bit different from your uh, electrodes placed here so uh, this is basically the montage also skin preparation now skin preparation comes into the picture for a wet electrode so there are some of the electrodes earlier days people were using wet electrode which will be used to with some adhesive gel so then what will happen is you will be electrode will be placed some gel will be put all over your uh, whenever electrodes are there and then you record but nowadays people have opted for dry electrode to reduce skin preparation time and there are uh, you know adequate uh, conductive dry electrode available so you don't have to do scalp uh, skin preparation and you know go through all this thing uh, another many like one of the main, uh, main thing is shielding so when you are recording your uh, thing the wires and all will go through from your head to acquisition system now anywhere even if a small unshielded part is there okay that can act as an antenna that will uh, you know susceptible to all the noise nearby okay why this is susceptible like generally also we have so many wires around okay the nothing happens and everything works fine because the generally whatever the system and all they have their certain uh, you know Uh, magnitude this brain wave and eeg are very very low magnitude in microvolt so susceptible to all the kind of noise very sensitive so it's very important that your shielding and all would be very very proper if you want to go ahead also uh, electrode contact check so this thing is uh, like um, when electrode is placed even if you move suppose your electrode are placed here even if you blink your eye or move your eye that electrode can capture that uh, movement or that electrode uh, response accordingly so the main thing is that mm, you know it is very important uh, to place your electrode properly and make sure it's conductive throughout the study uh, generally uh, many of the eeg studies and all a patient is advised to just uh, lie or even sleep and without any kind of movement because even a smallest movement even if your hand or something will get captured will disturb the entire acquisition uh, setup and you might not get the response or neural response which you want to get so uh, electrode contact check is very important nowadays in most of the acquisition system there are uh, like in traffic signal you have three lights red green and orange same thing is uh, there in terms of electrode uh, contact check as well what they do is simple they will measure the impedance if that impedance goes above certain level which means your conductivity reduced and at that time they will turn the light from green to orange or orange to red okay if you have a green light throughout the recording which means your device works perfectly fine or your uh, acquisition at least works perfectly fine so it's very important to check all this electrode contact check also common ground it's one of the basic thing for any electronic system design not only eeg or something and stream functionality check stream functionality check is nothing but uh, jitter uh, jitter or when exactly when it should come it should come you have suppose ITI I told you ITI inter trial interval 600 millisecond or anything so if it is 600 millisecond when first event come at 0th uh, millisecond next should come at 600 millisecond not at 620 not at 580 okay i just give one example of 20 millisecond jitter on both sides okay it should come exactly where do you want it to come okay so considering that fact uh, the stimuli functionality check is very important okay once all this biopotentials and triggers have been recorded okay it is important to transmit to a certain computational system where you can play with the data and make all sense out of it uh, 
generating stimuli and getting it uh, the data as well as trigger is important but this making sense out of it is equally important why because what you are going to do first you will get some file okay you import it into xyz software generally people use matlab as a computational software you import the data into matlab you try to figure out uh, what are the data what are the triggers how uh, you know how many uh, electrodes were there corresponding to that what uh, particular data correspond to what electrode then you take the data you take the data then you do all this sorts of information all this sorts of you know uh, processing on that first thing is biopotential insertion event insertion so basically this biopotential is signal acquisition event is this trigger acquisition further you pre process it you check whether it looks how it looks and you want not might not able to make the sense out of it because it is a raw data you have to filter it out now for filtering uh, for human non invasive way of recording that is eeg for eeg scalp recorded eeg uh, frequency range is defined or range of interest if you record it from your scalp you can take from 1 to 30 or something unless and until you are doing some specific uh, uh, application experimentation like you are uh, inducing gamma waves and all so human brain waves have been classified into different frequency range beta theta alpha gamma and when you go to sleep uh, this range will you know kind of shift from uh, one range one set of range to another set of range basically it shifts from high frequency to low frequency when you are deep sleep it will be having lower frequency so similar thing uh, like you know this filters and all are very important now for uh, this kind of erp experimentation visual or auditory what we will see is uh, whether uh, you know you are uh, you should uh, basically you are should be attentive you are not sleeping in that time so what happens is for human awake human scalp recorded eeg there is some range is defined generally what we take is from 1 to 30 or 3 to 30.5 to 30 based on your uh, hertz and additionally we will also check for uh, the notch uh, filter like you have power line interference or not all this thing will see in the next module when we will be discussing about the uh, erp extraction very important topic we'll go through all this thing also artifact rejection as i mentioned that if your value goes out of certain range which you defined as a threshold you can you know identify this you can uh, reject that particular epoch now what is epoch epoch means when one particular sound is given you are recording a little bit uh, you know after that like you have as i mentioned iti 600 millisecond you are interested one sounds come from 0th second or let's say minus 100 second to 500 millisecond so if you want to record that okay that is your one epoch if you are repeating the same sound 100 times to identify how is the response is you are having 100 epochs then you go through artifact rejection there will be some epochs will get removed if that epoch will get removed you will have a limited number of out of 100 let's say 78 is that 22 epochs are removed then you have to further consider that 78 electrode because that has having uh, those elect, uh, epochs are having values of your neural uh, lies in the range of neural potential we'll see everything uh, in detail i'll show it to you also if there are multiple type of sound you can create different bins that this is for one sound these all are the uh, epochs which is stored in that bin for other sound these all are the epoch which is stored in that bin like that you can put create different bins and then you can do the operation you can check the difference between uh, different bins behavior like bin 1 this sound this is the behavior bin 2 this sound this is the behavior bin 3 this sound this is the behavior you can change uh, check the difference between average value you will get an idea uh, com, uh, in response to which particular event your brain has reacted more or less vice versa good so all this thing you can do final thing is to plot the result and uh, further if you want you can do source estimation if you have multiple electrodes you can uh, try to do uh, imaging or imaging uh, basically used for fmri but uh, what i say is uh, you can try to check what is uh, how underlying source are there and all you can check all sorts of thing good so this is basically the overall flow uh, transmission happens using wireless communication protocol that's why it limits the you know range of frequency or you know your sampling frequency because all this thing are of uh, responses belong are in milliseconds range you know from 0 to 200 millisecond 0 to 300 millisecond uh, there are some responses which are you know very very fast which is within within first 10 millisecond you need to acquire that 
So, when sound comes there is something called auditory brainstem response ABR in first 10 millisecond you have to capture that if you miss that gone. So, that first 10 millisecond is very important during the 10 millisecond you should at least have 100 uh, samples which says that your sampling frequency should be at least 10 kilohertz or something. So, uh, it is a uh, you know kind of uh, very nice and that is why I said uh, it is a kind of recent advances and all it is very important that you are transmitting your data at adequate rate. Now, there are two ways to transmit one is wireless one is with wire with wire increase circuitry and complexity wireless decrease that, but wireless come at the cost of reduced sampling frequency or reduced communication uh, frequency. So, this thing you can clearly like you know it, it is a trade off you have to identify uh, based on your application what do you want to record and how you know what should be your sampling frequency what should be your uh, how at which rate you are going to transmit the data. Again, uh, it comes uh, there is a lot of things like whether you are transmitting serially, parallelly, wirelessly, which protocol you are using, whether you are using Wi Fi, whether you are using Bluetooth low energy module, all the thing uh, these things comes into picture. But there exist systems which are doing this and commercially available, uh, slightly you know, not I would not, I might not say it is not affordable, but there are systems available. Uh, uh, at the like somewhere around 1 lakh for 16 channel, you can record or 15,000 for. Uh, rupees for this uh, you know 8 channel system uh, from open BCI. So, we will quickly see the applications okay, of all this ERP related uh, experimentation where it can be useful. So, mostly I have covered most of the thing uh, first thing is it is useful might be useful in sensory systems uh, screening. So, here you can see uh, that is a hearing screening basically your check your auditory pathway vision screening also threshold destruction. What is threshold destruction? I am saying something you are able to listening that ok. Now, if I say something you might able to listen to that if I say now you might not listen. So, the uh, volume or you know intensity of uh, the thing what I am speaking ok. Same way you can give different amount of audios and we need to check whether you are able to listen uh, here to that or not. So, that is basically your uh, hearing screening or uh, and threshold identification. Now, for uh, deaf people or uh, who are hearing impaired they might not be able to hear the sound which you can easily hear, but they also have their own set of uh, uh, threshold. So, uh, threshold detection also when you are going through some uh, you know treatment or medical therapy related to your uh, sensory system or related to your auditory system they will keep on checking threshold detection whether it is being uh, increasing or not. So, this is basically uh, like you know for sensor system screening it also includes somatosensory as well. Also it checks your uh, peripheral nervous system when like it will uh, stimulate your brain and check that uh, simulate a particular area of your brain and check a particular limb whether your right leg, left leg, right hand, left hand moves or not. So, there are a areas identified in the brain, but for that you have to do the brain surgery areas identified in the brain when you try to stimulate or give a current pulse to a particular area it will move a certain uh, limb or it will move a certain leg or hand of yours. So, that is again uh, it will check two things it will also check your somatosensory system also your uh, peripheral nervous system works fine or not. Also, there is something called brain functionality test whether you are giving a certain set of audio visual stimuli you can check uh, get an all over idea of your brain uh, at different level cortex level before pr prior to cortex all this thing you can check. Uh, one another application is uh, coma recovery state like certain people are there uh, in uh, coma like out of t uh, 20, 30, 50 people which 5 or 10 have uh, you know high chances of coming out of that state. Now, why it is important because if a person is brain dead or in coma there uh, is some expenditure you need to spend daily ok. So, like I like we all are uh, you know believe in this uh, like optimal stuff that it might get recovered, but uh, the thing is some point of time uh, you might not sure that uh, till what point of time you need to keep on uh, spend uh, amount on that particular patient. So, out of uh, 100 or out of 1000 patient which 100 or which 10 which some first 10 20 percent have high chances of coming out of that set you can identify by uh, using uh, different ERP experiments as I mentioned you can customize your stimuli 
for those patients and try to screen them at least that out of this 1000 if you want to focus focus on first this 10 or 100 great uh, further is drowsiness detection it is very important when it comes to uh, uh, driving safety or even flying you know uh, pilots and all this thing uh, they or even most of the drivers they drive in odd hours we are not sure whether they are completely you know attentive or not so this thing you can identify using uh, this kind of there is some ERPs that is event related potentials which can measure the attention we will see that. So, how attentive a particular person before driving or flying it can save many uh, you know mishaps if we can actually detect this thing. Uh, also you can uh, I, um, some of you in metro cities on somewhere you would have seen that uh, breath analyzer are there uh, police and all used to check that uh, whether you are too much affected by alcohol or not. So, this similar thing you can check with the ERP experimentation as well. Further, there are some more uh, Melton disorders situations known as Alzheimer which is like a kind of a memory loss, schizophrenia, person will become too much angry. Now, there is something called gaming EEG. So, gaming EEG means uh, I mentioned uh, that visual stimuli is there. So, gaming EEG means a particular game is being designed to uh, and it will be given uh, to a patient to play. Now, a schizophrenic patient will get angry easily and uh, have more amount of anger than normal or control patients. If you make a certain set of one player game where a player moves and try to you know uh, like if you I am not sure if you have played Contra or Mario, it will give you an idea that uh, you know if a certain player moves, uh, a schizophrenic patient might hit or try to kill that particular enemy more time, try to press the key at uh, with higher uh, forces and all. So, considering uh, measuring the pressure on the key button, push button and uh, see how much time or how enemy it is killing, you can also get an identification about a schizophrenic patient as kind of you can uh, measure it or screen it for that depression anxiety a lot of a lot has been uh, talked in the recent past due to covid and all about mental health so all the situation can be screen identified using recording erps and uh, eeg you can make sense out of it whether a person is actually uh, you know uh, improved or is just pretending to be you know it has improved from a particular certain stage uh, also uh, for uh, uh, some of the other application lie detection uh, and uh, you know several things it can be useful. Hearing screening uh, there are some other odd uh, advantages as well like in some of the states government give some uh, discount or relaxation to the people who have hearing impairment. So, uh, we can identify that exact if, if a person is actually hearing impairment or he is pretending to be that. So, all this thing you can identify using uh, this. Uh, all uh, these are the applications of event related potential. So, how we can measure this event related potential? What are the basic, uh, I, I told you these are the basic building blocks, but how we realize that? So, these are the basic building blocks. How we can realize this thing is simple by conducting an experiment. How to do an experiment? So, in the next video, uh, we will see one ac uh, experiment. You can see this is a setup for ERP experiment. So, here the subject is wearing an electrode cape and uh, electrodes are here. This system which you can see here in which stimuli is being presented and here his potentials have been recorded. Once this potentials are recorded uh, for a uh, experiment, you can process it and get the make uh, sense out of it. This experiment is uh, using visual stimuli, attention detection, there will be a three type of events or images will be coming big blue ball, small blue ball and checkerboard and uh, a person is asked to click whenever big ball comes. Okay. So, this is basically an experiment. Uh, I will quickly show you the uh, video. So, you will get an idea of what exactly the experiment is and further uh, we will discuss about how we can uh, extract this data, how we can make sense out of it. So, I will just uh, show you this experiment. Uh, uh, like a glimpse of experiment, a part of experiment which is being happening. A subject is wearing a Inobio head cap consists of 8 electrode, reference electrode and ground electrode. Reference and ground electrode can be seen on the right ear lobe. 
uh, prior to attaching the reference and ground electrode, uh, on the earlobe subject was applied with a gel to improve the conductivity. On the visual presentation system, you can see three different types of event triggers are the small blue ball, big blue ball and checkerboard, which will ultimately work as a standard target and distractor. Simultaneously, uh, biopotential from all eight electrodes are recorded along with trigger. Subject is asked to click whenever target stimuli comes and all these events as well as biopotentials are recorded as an EDF file which will be further used to process P300 event related potential. So you have, see, you have seen the experimentation being performed. Before showing you how to extract the data, it is important to know uh, the software or uh, the package using which we can play with the EEG data. Uh, that is known as EEG lab. It is developed by Swash Center for Computational Neuroscience. Uh, it has uh, an excellent set of plugins using which you can uh, interpret the data in one or the other way. Like uh, for event related potential, there is something called ERP lab, event related potential laboratory. That, that is a plugin to EEG lab. So, I will show it to you, uh, the EEG lab, how it works and all this thing. So, basically to uh, conduct an ERP lab experiment and uh, get the sense out of the data, you should know how EEG lab and ERP lab works. Also it supports both uh, graphical user interface and scripting, we will see that. Uh, scripting is advisable for batch file processing, when you have 100 patients data, you will not do, uh, you know, you will not use graphical user interface 100 times and uh, you know, uh, go through it. Instead, make a script, okay, before lunch you make a script, run the script. By the time you come back from lunch, all your data will be processed and your results would be saved. It sounds very nice and funny, but yeah, it like uh, it is, uh, it takes time, but it is very good thing if you uh, learn scripting and GUI both. Because when you are doing some form of research or when you are not sure about your parameters of filtering, artifact rejection, etc., it is important that you use GUI and set up one uh, protocol or set up one extraction protocol I should say and then try to mm, generate a script and do the batch file processing, it is important. So latest version would be available here and uh, different plugins, this both things I will show it to you. Yeah. So this is basically a standard uh, a download page of EEG lab, you can write your name and email id. They will ask why do you want to uh, download, you can say just write uh, what is your research area, we will write neural engineering, then you can ask for update and all that is up to you. Once you submit, you will be able to download the EEG lab and one more thing which I talked in my presentation is uh, this plugins. So all these different plugins you can go through it and these plugins are still being updated by one or the other users. So I mentioned uh, one of the plugin like this uh, clean line, it removes the line noise or sinusoidal artifact, so power, power line artifact, there is a clean row data which uh, use the artifact substra uh, subspace reconstruction, uh, reconstruction to uh, get the you know pre-processed data, deep fit is to locate the dipole inside the uh, brain you and Elorata is there, ERP lab is what we are going to see. Okay. You can also see the download statistic and what are the reviews and all this thing. So it is a good thing, you can download it and put it along with EEG lab to make uh, you know more sense out of that. Now if we go back to the presentation, this is the signal processing flow for ERP uh, extraction. So now all of you are aware about this thing, that electrode will be used, it will be transmitted wirelessly and it will be here. Once it uh, you have the file what you are doing, so you are uh, acquiring the data as well as event, you apply the filters, FIR filters, you can uh, you know uh, perform a comparative analysis of which filter is good, uh, also order matters, how much orders you are taking, which is an optimal order for a particular uh, acquisition, you can do all sorts of things, you can perform a bandpass filtering, you can do notch filter, 
you can create an event list something called event list what is event list we'll see that in uh, next uh, module and will uh, you can also see the epoch, epoch generation generate the epoch and then uh, artifact rejection bin creation and plot so it's a simple uh, method to generate uh, this kind of uh, erp and this all things can be done using eeg lab and erp lab so in the next module uh, we will see one demo of how you can get the uh, data and uh, generate extract basically erp of the same experiment which you have seen before you have seen this experiment how we can make the sense out of the data in that experiment we'll see in the next module till then all of you take care bye